IDF, given the mixed reception to the fact that the PlayStation Portal is remote play only, would it be possible for Sony to add the Wii U gamepad experience via updates if they wanted to? Also, do you think this opens the door for Xbox to release a Wii U gamepad of its own, especially if Portal itself sells well, given the clear opportunity to improve upon Sony's offering? So that was actually uh, one of the sort of things, I won't say it went viral, but certainly a lot of people picked up on the fact that you did some uh, gamepad testing for our portal review, John. Oh, yeah. And it turned out that, lo and behold, a, um, a, a from the ground up hardware solution for uh, in-room streaming actually did much better than remote play. It didn't surprise us at all, but no. it seems to surprise a lot of people. Do you, do you think that it could actually be added as a feature? I mean, within my um, review, I did say, well, the point is that your PlayStation still needs access to the internet. And if it's only got one Wi-Fi card, how's it going to do that? That's what I, I was wondering. That's what, I, that's the thing, right? With the antennas in the system, I feel like there should be a way to do a direct connection. Like theoretically, it should be possible, right? You'd think, well, it, it, I mean, it, it should be possible for sure, right? Because, you know, People have been streaming uh, from their PCs without any issue whatsoever. So I feel like you could just do a, I don't know, like update the, the portal to like basically have like I'm at home mode versus uh, I am I want to use the internet mode and find a way to mm. separate that in a clear sense. But just allowing direct connection and removing the router and the internet and everything else from, from well, the whole setup and just do I'm direct I'm actually thinking connection. about this. I don't know if it's possible. So one yeah, thing on the Series X wouldn't work anymore. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not only that. Like, well, you could see you could have wired connection to your to your PS5 yeah, and then use its Wi-Fi, it. right? But yeah. but there's this issue uh, yeah. with the PS5, and I've talked to John this about this before. On the PS5, when you are hooked up to wireless or uh, wired, it makes you choose which connection you want, and yeah. it shuts down the other. On mm -hmm. a Series X, it just like auto it just. It just takes whatever's fastest and right, then right. it automatically starts using it. Uh, that's neither here nor there. But I think they, like, if you think about it, there's a motherboard here and maybe the chip on it that handles internet actually is mm. dedicated to one line or the other and not both that's why at the I same was, time. Well, I guess that makes it less viable. I would be okay with not having internet connection to be able to use the a portal in a much higher quality. Agreed. Uh, and... That is that is something that Sony has done officially before. When you look at the Vita, there were plenty of games where you would start it and be like, uh, they would disable the internet connection, right? Because for extra, you know, power for the game. So like, they would just pop a little thing up in the corner and say that. And I feel like that should be feasible here. Yeah, but, I, I think mean, it's obviously, worth, I think it's worth pointing out that the obviously the Wii U had discrete transmitters, one for the gamepad. Uh, right. and one for the internet, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's how yep. it does it. And there's only one transmitter that we're aware of it within the uh, within the PlayStation 5. I suppose if you really wanted to be hardcore about it, you could do some sort of weird uh, splitter off the HDMI port, um, or you could possibly put in another Wi-Fi transmitter in the M2 socket, since that's PCI Express. Hmm. But it all goes... Basically, we're, we're taking a solution that is supposedly just basic and plug and play that anybody could use, and we're coming up with increasingly bizarre well, use I, it's <laughs> just configuration <laughs> scenarios to make this feasible. Work. I continue to be baffled by the fact that they didn't implement this to begin with when they built the PS5. Like, Was mm. the portal in development too short of a time for them to include that? Like, I feel like... That's my I, thought. I, I, I would assume that. Just, but the even issue, then, why wouldn't you? They want to improve the remote play situation anyway. Yeah. It's terrible. Well, I just think it is always a, uh, a value added feature that wasn't given undue prominence. Um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about the lag, which is high. And I just think it's probably within the SOC. You know, there's a lot of conjecture about, um, uh, you know, oh, yes, you know, it's got to go through your router. Possibly that, well, that would be an issue if it was a Wi Fi connection to the router. I don't see it being an issue if you've got a wired connection. I just think it's an inherently laggy system. And unfortunately, you know, it probably could be done better. And it is done better on PC, as was pointed out last week by uh, one of our questionnaires. Yeah. I just don't think it was ever a, a foundational aspect of the system in the way it was with the Wii U, which is why the Wii U 
works. Better. It yeah. has to work. It's got to work in a plug and play scenario where, you know, especially when so many of the audience uh, on Nintendo are quite young. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's just it's just got to work and be durable. So that's not really, I don't think, how remote play was designed. Yeah, I mean, you could probably get a better remote play in theory, assuming that, you know, there isn't lag within the SOC. I kind of think there is. But yeah, yeah, we've just gone through a whole series of, of, of ways to do it. And I think the only way you probably could do it was to have some sort of um, dongle slash kludge that's actually going into the HDMI port. Right. Um, and yeah, and then maybe the, the, the portal itself would connect with Bluetooth or something. And it would be an in-room solution. It wouldn't be, you know, you, I guess it could fall back to the current solution for remote play over the internet. Mm. But it's it's all getting really tricky. You know, Rich, <laughs> the I've, whole, oh, I've heard this is all good. blown out of proportion because I saw a video trending on social media about playing with your portal on an airplane. So mm-hmm. that is definitely a viable way to play with the portal. Jesus, yeah. that sounds terrible. <laughs> Imagine well, that. The particular plane in question had Starlink. But even then, uh, you've had Starlink even before. Then, that latency ain't Starlink, too great. It's not great. Yeah, no. But maybe they got it working. <laughs> I don't know. The The whole thing, the reaction to the portal has been baffling to me because I feel like, in general, people seem to think it's great. <laughs> it well, doesn't yeah, me too. This is, this is what I was trying to get across in my video. You know, um, everybody has a different perception of lag, right? Um, it's only when you have really egregious games that go beyond the, the pale that people actually start complaining about input lag. Yeah, and, I think you're And, right. you know, we've demonstrated it in the past. Well, it's not even um, just about lag. It's just about the image quality and the, the, the stuttering, stuttering quality. And, like, right? it doesn't look smooth. Well, it doesn't look good. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not, it's not enough. But some folks don't seem to notice or care and they think it's great. And that's fine for them. It's just, I'm actually yeah. surprised. That's all. Well, you know, if you've bought, if you spent two hundred dollars on it, to tell everybody, it's <laughs> buyer's quite, remorse really is that what you're saying here? Like, <laughs> it's kind d- of like buyer's denial. I, I don't know what you call that. It's the sort of uh, rose tinted spectacles of right, yeah, t- yeah. spending a lot of money on a device. You know, but John, you I, know, behind the I scenes to justify it. Behind the scenes, we we've been surprised recently behind the scenes about the inability for you know things to be seen or not seen. So you know that the casual, most casual observer doesn't notice games stuttering yep. or games having uh, bad input latency yep. and you know. that you know what that that's actually good for them yeah. I, I feel happy for them <laughs> they're liberated the, the cave the enjoy yes. the experience still in that more. cave and that's that's great that's great that's cool. <laughs> it's just okay. the the way things go man like just looking at this whole freaking gt versus forza video i'm working on when you show two pictures of the game there is one set of people that will say game a looks like and I quote atrocious, but then a separate group will say, "Well, no, game B looks atrocious," and it's like they see completely different things from those two screenshots. And I'm so fascinated by this. <laughs> Isn't like, it the case that you actually behavior. swapped the screenshots around? Oh yeah, on the one I swapped, the, I swapped the the, the <laughs> watermark genius. and caught a bunch of people <laughs> and on that as well, which is really funny. I'm a yeah. big fan I of that. I think that's got to be it's got to be part of your your video. Do it in the I video. Gotta, Do it in the video. I got to mention that. The psychology. There is a there's a psychological here. element to them, you know, yeah. and it's just it's really interesting to see the way people operate. But so sometimes I think people don't notice things. Sometimes I think they choose based on what they what expect they own. or you know what they, what they own. And it's just it's it's a whole it's a weird world out there for this stuff. <laughs> yeah.